Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Today, let's learn how to create a new project in Pro Tools. I've launched Pro Tools, and I'm looking at a blank screen here. Depending on how you set Pro Tools up to launch, you may see a window for creating new projects and opening existing projects. We'll see how to set that up later in this video. But assuming the window isn't open and we have a blank screen, go to the File menu and select Create New. This opens the Dashboard window. You can also use the key equivalent to do this, which on Mac is Command plus N, or Control plus N on Windows. Once this window is open, on the left hand side we have three choices. We can create a new project, open up a recent project we've been working on, or we can access a project that's stored in the cloud. The fourth option is down here on the bottom of the window, open from disk. This allows us to access projects that are stored on a hard drive, but aren't shown in the recent menu. To create our new project, let's go back to Create. Now we can work our way down through the parameters for the project. At the top, we can name the project. Then we have two choices for where the project will be stored, on a physical hard disk or in the cloud. Since I'm working on my computer, I'll store this on hard disk. If you want to work from a pre-configured template for your project, select the next box. Then you can choose from the menu. Pro Tools comes with a number of different templates, or you can create your own. I'm not going to use a template today, so I'll leave that box unchecked. Our next four parameters define the setup for the project. We can choose either Broadcast Wave or AIF for the audio file format. Typically, I leave this at Broadcast Wave, since that's the most universally compatible. Next, we select the bit depth or resolution for the project. I usually work at 32-bit float for best resolution, then move down to 24-bit when I'm finished but you can also choose to work at 24-bit resolution. Unless you have a specific reason to work at 16-bit, I'd recommend staying at 24-bit or 32-bit float. The next parameter is sample rate. You can choose to match this to your project, 44.1 kHz for CD quality, or 48 kHz if you're working on audio for video, for example. Personally, I usually work at 96 kHz and then downsample at the end. I find this gives the best results. The trade-off is that you use up more hard drive space. In most cases, I leave the I.O. settings at last use, so Pro Tools will default back to whatever input and output setup I was using before. But you can choose from other settings if they're applicable for your purposes and gear. The interleave checkbox determines how Pro Tools stores multi-channel audio tracks. If you have a stereo track, for example, you have a left channel and a right channel. With this box unselected, they'll be stored as separate files. If you select this box, the two sides of the stereo audio track will be combined into a single composite file. Now this really doesn't matter for Pro Tools, it can deal either way, but if you're exporting to an external audio processing application, it may require one format or the other. Once we have the project defined, we choose where to store it. You can have Pro Tools ask you where you want to store it by selecting Prompt for Location, which comes up the first time you save the project, or you can choose a specific location for it now, which is what I always do. One more thing, if you select the Show on Startup box here at the lower left, this window will open automatically every time you launch Pro Tools. This is very convenient for quickly getting to work on a new or existing project. That's it, we're ready to create our project.